Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to experience a proper motorcycle club, a real MC. This is going to be good. Cue the intro. This adventure is supported by Ashworth Automotive in Western Supermare, the number one garage keeping you and Helmethead on the road. Well, I'm off to Western Supermare to see Lee, who's the owner of Ashworth Automotive, because he and his company are creating the Honda Monkey Bike Overlander. That's my bike that I'm aiming to try to ride around the world and do as many countries as possible. But part of this entire thing is that I'm gonna go up and spend some time with Lee, his life, with all the stuff that Lee's about, and obviously have a complete giggle. Now, Lee is the vice president of a proper MC, a proper motorcycle club. And I've never been to one. And as you can imagine, like I've seen Sons of Anarchy and all that stuff. And I know it's not real, but I don't know what to expect. So I'm going to go and find out what the club scene's all about. This is going to be really interesting. But first, I need to pick up the sidekick. And I've got about 150 miles to get to Western Supermare. But this will be a giggle. Hello, mate. Dude. It's been ages. Hasn't it? It's been, pro since we've done a little proper adventure together, it's been ages. I'm excited, are you? Yeah. I bet you are. Well, massively, the monkey boy, I know Lee spent like weeks and weeks and weeks on it, right? And then, on top of it, tonight, we're gonna go to a proper bike club. Now, do you reckon yeah. Sons of Anarchy, Round Table, Hammer, like, well, do you we, know what I mean? We already know, don't we? Well, we know but, to a degree, but we don't know, no, do we? Like, we've watched the programmes, we've never seen... Have you ever been to a proper bike sort of club well, properly? No. Not properly? Not with yeah, loads of people but, uh, there and... It's going to be interesting, isn't it? But do you know the most important thing of all? What? For them, it's massive. Do you know why? Because <laughs> for the first time in history, a lord has visited an MC. Well, do you know that's the case, though? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah 100% not made up at all and guaranteed in any way. Dude, shall we get on the road? We've got 150 I've been miles. I've the beard, especially, because yeah. I feel like I'll fit in better. To be fair, you look less homeless, what's weird. You know, look, it's because you've got a jelly in your, in your <laughs> yeah, hair. Yeah. You look, you've gone all cool. Anyway, Mr. Cool Man, let's go on the road. 150 miles. Let's get to Lee. Um, hopefully, we're going to go and meet Lee first before we go and check in at the yeah. high hotel. We're there for, it's basically three days. Um, lads weekend away. Yeah, lads weekend away. Yeah. In, and, you've, and we've got your Vespers all loaded in yeah. the back. Dude, this is going to be epic. It's going to be good, isn't it? Let's go on the road. Well, we've just covered 154 miles and I'm currently 0.3 miles away from Ashworth Automotive. Now, what I've literally, I've come bearing gifts. I've got Lee a bit of a surprise. It's a very cool surprise, actually. And I want to give it to him before I get to the hotel and check in and we go and do all the uh, motorcycle club stuff and all this. So I'm going to give a buzz because he doesn't know that I'm here yet. He's got no idea. Um, so hopefully we're going to get the reaction that we're after. Madame Zayla's rooms in Torchery, we wank him and spank him, how can we help you? <laughs> oh, bonjour, Lee. Uh... <laughs> oh, bonjour, mon petit poulet, bonjour. So, I've just come this 154 miles, and but I'm not going straight to my hotel. My plan is to, I'm just around the oh, corner. Wait, 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 let me stop you there. What? A plan. We've got a plan this time, have you? I have a plan, because it's a cool plan. I'm going to come okay. bear, I'm going to come bearing gifts. I've got something to give to you that's amazing. Um, but I need to come and see you, and I think I could just pop into the garage for a second and drop it off. Ah, um, there is a problem with that plan. It's a good plan, and I and I do like the fact that you have come up with a plan. However, that isn't normally how we roll, <laughs> and unfortunately, there is a problem with it. Uh, the problem with it is um, you can't come here because one of two reasons, really. One. I, I think you're aware of our adult entertainment sideline that we got going on here. Yeah, and got, that's why I've come uh, down early. Yeah, well, I've got Kwame and Leroy are all naked and they've been <laughs> rubbed down with blocks of lard. 
um, and you've only got a certain amount of time till it literally all just runs off. <laughs> so they're, they're literally we've got it in a film, and also the monkey bike is still on the ramp because I'm waiting for a special tool I need to get the clutch out. Right. Okay. Um, so if you come here. I mean, the, the 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 Latvian ladies won't mind that you see them in full battle dress, but um, you know all the rest of it going on. You and you'll see the monkey bike. Well, so obviously that's a problem because we can't have you seeing it until the grand reveal. That is true. I could. I was going to suggest I could go and close my eyes and walk in, but that would probably be dangerous, I and I might grab the wrong to, thing. You closing your eyes is fine. Hang on a minute. I've got I've got a servant making. Yeah, can you finish that, George? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah, that's Dan's cup of tea, and that's your cup of coffee. Um, yeah, uh, what you'll do is you'll probably come in here and get all like touchy feely. Yeah. You'll be touchy feeling the monkey bike. Yeah. And then you're going to get all excited, and we're going to have to try and calm you down. And yeah, and then and also, it's going to get gonna messy. Yes, what some of the protrusions are. What? And, um, what it's about? A surprise. What about? You come and meet me down in back lane, and you come in the back of my camper. Oh, a bit like old times. Yeah, we could get the camper rocking. We have a bit of a laugh. It'll, it'll be good. And then you go back, and you can carry on having fun with yeah. the foreign people. Well, um, yeah, because we could we could uh, potentially film that and use it for um, Helmet Head Bang Bus Three, couldn't we? <laughs> well, we could do it. Bang Bus Two did really well, so I think yeah that could fund well, the whole it, world trip. A little bit I'm a little bit disappointed that it only did so well in Germany for some reason. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened there. I don't know either, but all that matters is we get the money. But still, exactly, shout, exactly. shout, I'll come down the lane, you come and meet me, and we'll come together. I mean, I'll give you a gift. Okay, well, that sounds, yeah, that's a bit, a bit, little bit like dogging, I suppose. Okay, um, all right, I'll, I'll come and meet you down the lane then. All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, all right. Cheers. Bye bye, bye bye. Sweet. So we're going to meet him in a lane and I'm going to give him a very special gift. So Lee, Hello. obviously the man that's making the monkey bike into the best in the world and obviously we're going to go down to your MC but we'll talk about all your MC and stuff MCC. later. MCC. MCC? Yeah, yeah. What's MCC stand for? Um, motorcycle club. MC is a higher status than an MCC. So basically there has to be something to differentiate the two. Oh, okay. So an MC is basically back patch. Yeah. And an MCC is either a front or a side patch, basically. So this is, this That's basic, very basic idea. Basically, you know I'm going to say with no idea but what I'll I'm talking about. I'll explain, explain all that to you tonight. But quickly, because obviously I know you're busy at work and you're constantly working on I, the monkey I, bike. Do you know what, to be honest with you, the last two weeks I've been just sat in the office watching YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I've been up. bored shoehead. I, I had this little yellow monkey bike in for a minute, did a couple of bits, and then just left it in the back of the workshop, and I've just been sat watching YouTube for the last two weeks. I haven't done nothing. I've been going home at five o'clock every night, <laughs> having a nice tea and a nice shower, sitting there all night as well, and then coming in and work when I felt like it, about 11 o'clock next day. What, and then just putting all these made-up face posts? No, it's been, it's, been, it's been unbelievable for the size of the actual motorcycle, and you'd think, like I've had mates coming down, you ain't still working on that. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm doing this. And, and you'd, you'd never believe, when you see it, some of it you will probably think, oh, that's different, oh. And then you'll look at what's involved and, and you might get it because you two are obviously a bit more mechanically minded like a, a, a normal person. I don't think I actually know any of them, but <laughs> th there is some about and they might come and think, what have they done? Oh yeah, that, that, that. And, but when you start looking at it in detail i mean just one thing on it alone took six days six days six mental. days absolutely mental but because it was it... a trial and error thing as well because we've done this one thing um that bike just so wasn't designed for that one thing so we tried it and then altered it and then binned it all and then done it again um and the angles of all the bits that had to be fabricated and then welded together was a proper nightmare and there were a few i was at the other end of the workshop at the time and i did hear some some language which normally doesn't come from like sugar and butt that's cheeks. it yeah yeah i think he did say butt cheeks but that's one part of it but it has been uh yeah full on see that's the thing you've spent 
I, about two weeks, isn't it? Something like I think that. It is pretty about much that, working yeah. the bike. Obviously, at your time and your costs and all, yeah. all the money. So I thought I'd give you something that's priceless because <laughs> oh, if I give you something that's priceless, What's this gonna be? as in it's not worth any money. It's not a cup with a penis in it or anything. Is it? <laughs> well, I just thought it was a bit priceless. That, yeah. that you know, it's worth something that you can. Well, you know, again, uh, uh, it was worth uh, nothing, but but for you it would be worth millions. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I've put it in a proper bag to make I it look posh again. So I've got you two two things, right? Okay. And it looks like I'm swearing at the camera now. Two things. Yeah. Right, first thing, I'm going to give you the priceless thing first, actually. Okay. So this is the priceless thing. This is the, this is going to rock your world. This shall is, I, I'll open it, Yeah, shall I? absolutely. This is the priceless thing that's uh, priceless. I don't know what's in there. You wouldn't Do you me. not? No, you wouldn't tell me. I'll show it to YouTube first, shall I? Yeah. Can you hold that for me, please? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Have a look. <laughs> I thought brilliant. I just thought perfect. Yeah. You can have the original drawing. <laughs> yeah. You've got your own. You're gonna have to sign it. I have. Have you? Yeah, there. That's it. Oh. It's an eleven. It's an eleven out of oh, ten. I didn't realise that's the signature. Uh, eleven out of ten. <laughs> sign one. Drawn by my fair, my fair oh, hands. Fair play, dude. That's brilliant. And then the other side, yeah, right? That's good. Because like we've had so many conversations, you've mentioned a couple of different things that you drink. Yeah. And one, one was port, and one was southern comfort. They're the two things so far that you can say oh, you don't. Yeah. Okay, good. Port's the most important bit. So I thought I'd get you an 11 out of 10 port as oh, well. Outstanding. That's so good. this isn't port, oh, <laughs> but it's like port. Can you have that a minute? Like please, port. <laughs> it's port, but it's not port. It's an 11 out of 10 port. It's not Southern Comfort though, is it? No, it's 11 out of 10 port. Oh, it actually is. It's not port. What is it? <laughs> it's Chilean version of port. Oh, so thank 11, you very much. 11 out of 10. So you can drink your port by staring at the actual picture. Oh, outstanding. Right, I'll hug you first because he's filming. Thanks, guys. Right, coming in. Coming in coming for a in. snuggle. Thanks, dude. Thank you very much. Cool. That's awesome. Well, we're going to see you tonight anyway. Yes, indeed, and yes. obviously over the next few days. I'm going to take the sidekick to the hotel now. And <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that doesn't sound wrong at all, does it? And spend some time with him, but we'll see you that in a bit. That is so funny. That is brilliant. Is it good? Yeah, because when I saw this um, on the tube, I just couldn't stop laughing. I had to pause it, watch it back, because it, it was hilarious. Because the funny thing as well is, you don't realise, but there is one of the things that's on there is on the bike. I still think it's a, oven. Oh, it's a pie oven. <laughs> I can cook and eat while I'm riding. And I will say that the thing that I put on there that is on here, yeah. I've put something else on with it as well. And I think you're only supposed to have one or the other, but I wanted both. And I don't think it was... It, well, it wasn't happy trying to accept both, but it had no choice. It was having them. <laughs> so I've got them both on there. But, yeah, you'll see Sunday. on Sunday. Yeah. Cool. Oh, it must be really frustrating because you're so close yet so far. Well, it's just over there yeah, for me. Literally it's literally just, just there. over there. Well, I'm gonna, yeah. when you go, I'm going to get him to follow with his camera. And yeah. Well, well, if you went down there and looked through the trees, um, there might be some people dogging down there. But <laughs> but look through that and you and you might catch a glimpse. So I'll shut the door in a minute. <laughs> and we sure won't. You, I'll turn around. Sure I'm going to save it. it. I want to see it with everyone else. Yeah. I really do. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sneak. Yeah. At least I'm not. I'll, well, I won't tell you, Will. I mean, all, all at well. I, do you know what? For the last two weeks, I think, I've been saying to everybody, oh, well, all I got to do, and that's all, <laughs> the, the, so it's a bit of a joke now, because we've got a whiteboard on the wall, and I'm rubbing things out, then but then adding stuff, <laughs> so the list hasn't really gone down, and I'm like, right, all I got to do, and everyone's going, oh, because <laughs> it's just the list keeps, but now there's, uh, I got that to do, I got to do that little bit down there uh when this tool comes put the new clutch in and then i got I, I mean i want to try and get a bit of mileage on it before you get on it screwing there you've only really got tomorrow i know so we've given lee the priceless piece of basically handwritten blueprints to the best monkey cycle in the entire world i think he was quite chuffed yeah it seemed it didn't i it? think uh, yeah i think all that probably thousands of pounds and time he's dedicated into in, into this project is he's repaid now with that piece <laughs> of art yeah. 
So now what we're going to do, obviously, do is we're going to go and head to the hotel, check in, dump all of our stuff. I'll give you a little bit of a tour once we get there. Crack open our first beer as such. And then, of course, we're being picked up tonight. I kid you not, we're being picked up tonight by a prospect. And I'm guessing what prospects do is the iron in for the other club members and things. I have no idea. Anyway, that is the plan. So we'll check in. I'm taking the psychic to a travel lodge because I'm really posh. We'll check in to the hotel. Well, we have just arrived at the Travel Lodge, and of course this is where all people of noble birth, like lords, stay. no, it's not where lords stay. It's rubbish, it's cheap, but it will do. Let me give you a really quick tour. So as you walk through the door, this is what you're gonna get, the two beautiful single beds. This is the bathroom in all of its splendor. Look at this, sexiest man in the world, of course, in the mirror as always. Everything, it's all the stuff that you need. It's all the standard stuff and all that. And at the end of the day, it's not bad. Now, because we are staying here, what's dirt cheap, we ain't drinking cheap beer and drinking cheap wine because we've got to be like the commoners. You've got to admit, obviously, you're used to being peasant, so you're used to this kind of thing. Now, I am obviously supposed to have like a king-size bed. They've got that wrong, but they've got something right. What's that? They've put your bed in the corner against the wall. So at least there's kind of a difference. I've got the full stretch that I can look around and enjoy it. And you've got, yeah, I was going to say, that's a good idea. Oh, I was going to say that you're a, a little bit more, do you know what I mean? You're against the wall, so you've got the peasant side of it. Well, obviously right. I've got all the space and the niceness and there's got to be at least three foot there between us. So you breathe that way because your breath will be bad and I will just hang around here. Good? Yeah, I think the place we went to last time was better. This is a bit... It's cheaper, to be fair. It's the cheapest it? I could possibly find. Well, I was wondering what this is for. You know when I keep saying I'll offer to pay? Yeah. At some point you're going to realise you don't want me to pay. <laughs> Do you think this is like to uh, wrap yourself up in when you're in the morning? Yeah. I always thought, you know, what they're there for, because they seem a bit daft. Here we go. That's what that's for. Or is it a kilt? It's got a stripe on it. Or maybe it's like to wrap yourself... I wonder if you can wrap it all the way around. <laughs> Romans. Here we go. Empire. How about that? Got ya. Oh, oh hello. Just... <laughs> you just flashed everyone. <laughs> it's not so good. Well, shall we enjoy... Hang on, I'll even open it. Are you ready for this? Shall we enjoy... A peasant's beer. Yeah. Let's do this properly. Let's do this together. Hang on a minute. Let's do it together. Do Western Supermare. Here we come. Yep. Yaki da. Well, we've got literally a couple of hours to enjoy a couple of beers before we're going to get picked up and taken to the MCC. I am learning all about the club stuff, just like you are, because I'm probably going to say everything wrong tonight, but I'm dead excited by that lot. So we're going to chill out, wait for the prospect to pick us up, and then we'll ask what the prospect does. I still think he potentially does the iron in or something like that for Lee, but we'll all find all the information you could possibly want to know about motorcycle clubs in this great British country. So, Alex, you're Lee's prospect, is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's correct. So is the truth that really he's your bitch or you're his bitch? Well, I know what he's, he's going to see this, so I have to say I'm his bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the prospect side of things, have you been doing it for long? Uh, yeah, I've been doing it for... Eight months, I think, something like that. How long did it take? No, well, it didn't take us. It can take up to a year, maybe more, but it depends on the person, really. So, wow. Yeah, it can go. It just, just depends on how much you're willing to put into it. And See, Lee was saying to me that you have to do like his ironing and his washing. <laughs> he's told you that. Yeah, is yeah. that actually true? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's real true. Yeah, I'm always washing up for him and doing all, cleaning all his pots and pans. <laughs> all the cooking he's been doing. Because he loves to cook. I've got, like you said, you guys, I'll get my prospect to pick you up, he'll <laughs> bring you back. Have you got any washing yeah. that you need doing? And all that stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so we're not massively far away. No, not too far. Um, and we're going to grab a couple of drinks there. Yeah. And, and they've got a meeting going on and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so we're, they'll be up in the meeting, so you'll probably, they'll be the prospects downstairs for a bit. We might get called up, if we get called up, and just have to have a drink on your own for a minute. That's right, that's cool. So, yeah. so we're not far away. And what's the name of the club? Uh, Van Diemen's. So that's what, exactly what I thought it was called. But I, because I say everything wrong and everything that I say, yeah. I thought I'll get it wrong. So that's <laughs> someone actually knows. Cool. Well, we'll be there in a second. <laughs>
So we are here at the MCC. I've got to get that right because I keep saying MC. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to interview Lee and get him to tell you all about it, how it all works, right from the beginning, right till the end. But I can say one thing, this place is seriously cool. So Lee, right, this is your place. This is basically like a second home from yeah, what that's I, can, right, yeah. I can work out. So as a person that has literally no idea whatsoever about the club team, I literally don't have any idea whatsoever, Explain what it's like to join right from when you're like a prospect to basically being the president of a proper motorcycle club because everyone wants to know what the real truth is behind being here. What, yeah. what, what's it actually take? Okay, so how it starts is, I mean, I, I can give you an example of how it started for me was um, having friends with motorcycles that didn't really ever want to go out on their bikes. Um, and there comes a point when you get frustrated with that and you're always out on your own. Um, so basically, what happened with me was uh, I went to a local bike night, met some of these guys here in this club, um, got friendly with them. I did know about club life anyway because a friend of mine has been in clubs since he was 18 and he's my age, uh, just on the cusp of entering his prime. Um, so I did know how it worked, but basically how it works is somebody, say you for example, would get to know people, you'd see us around somewhere, um, might be at a bike night or whatever, you'd get to know maybe one of the people, maybe more. Um, normally you would get invited to the clubhouse by somebody, a member of that club, and then you'd obviously, in this case, discover how mind-blowingly awesome they all are. And you'd think, hang on a minute, I, I want to get involved with this. Some people haven't got the time and the commitment to actually become a full, go through the process, which I'll explain in a second, to become a full member of the club. Um, so they uh, are what's called a support member. We've got some of those because of their job or their lifestyle, their life, how it is, they just can't quite commit to it. Um, but, but what happens is there's a, a period at the beginning called hang around. Some clubs will actually have a patch or a flash saying hang around on it. And you, you will notice this if you go to club events or bike events and you see people wearing colors which is what these are called um, some people call this a cut some people call it a cut off um, but this is your colors so if you see one that says hang around on it that is a guy that is potentially going to start prospecting for the club and then further on down the line become a full patch member of that club so what happens is when you're hanging around that literally is what it what it sounds like you're hanging around with the guys um, you go out on a few rides with them um, you come to the clubhouse uh, you, you get involved basically and that is a time period where you decide whether you want to be a part of it and they decide whether they want you to be a part of it um, if you're a bit of a tool then that's not going to go any further than that um, if you can bring something to the table, as it were, um, you're a good laugh, you can ride a motorcycle, that's like <laughs> quite important. Um, then once you've been hanging around with the club for a while, and that time period is determined by the club, not the person, um, you would say to any full patch member, this is awesome, I want to be a part of this, I, I want to prospect. So then it comes to the table, which is this, um, Everybody will say, right, um, Helmet Head wants to prospect for the club. So then you have a vote. It has to be unanimous, so everybody has to put their hand up. Yep, he's an awesome guy. Um, he can start prospecting. So then there's a time period of prospecting. That differs between clubs. Um, in that prospecting term, you will get assigned um, a sponsor. Okay, so Alex that you met a minute ago, he's my prospect, I'm his sponsor. Um, your sponsor is um, responsible for you. Uh, so if you go out to another club or, out, or to a public event even, um, you're responsible for that prospect and you basically school him through his prospecting term. Anything he wants to know, 
Um, he asks you, he comes to you, and basically, it's like being a teacher. As, as weird as it seems to people that are outside of the club scene, um, and I get this asked a lot, that if you just want to ride your bike and you don't want to be like tied to rules and that, why do you do it? But the reason that you do it is because it works so well. So there is a procedure, there is a protocol. Um, so yeah, once the guy has gone through his prospecting term and he showed his commitment to the club, he's put in all the effort, potentially, hopefully, at the end of that term, he becomes a full member. Like Big Tony that's downstairs, he became a full member of this club last Thursday. Um, he's finished his prospecting. We all voted him in as a full patch member of the club. Um, so that's basically how that works. Once you're patched in and you're a full member of the club, then you've got a probationary period, um, which if you did something really drastic, uh, and this is, oh yeah, I was going to say it hasn't happened since I've been here, but it has actually. Um, then something, if you did something wrong, like there's a thing called patch fever that sometimes it's known that if somebody gets patched into a club, then they think basically um, they're Billy Big Bollocks and because they've got the backup of everybody in the club, they think they can go and cause some trouble with some random guy at a bike event. Well, it doesn't work like that. You're, you're, just, you're the same as everybody else. You're not bigger than them. You're not harder than them because you've got all these other guys behind you. It doesn't work like that. So that, that person's then out because you don't need that grief. Everybody's got to get along. At the end of the day, everybody's into the same thing. They all share the common interest of riding bikes. It's just that we have this as our, our lifestyle, our life choice. Um, so like this, for example, this is my family. Okay. Um, you did say about MC and MCC. I'll, uh, do you want me to explain that? Yeah, definitely. So for, for my aspect, I obviously have no idea of the club. And for me walking in, it's welcoming and it's like a i class it like a brotherhood so it's yeah. like you guys are like you said a family massively yeah. um but lots of people outside would like for me all i've ever seen sounds daft is like sons of anarchy yeah. and hollywood films and a motorcycle club is a motorcycle club but there's lots of like it's almost like politics isn't there so yeah. there's there's different patches like you said front patch back patch etc obviously yeah. loads more than i do so i always classed the straight away this was a, a motorcycle club it's an mc but I was wrong. Yeah. So the, the, this is an MCC. Yeah, a lot of people say that to me. Um, oh, you're MC. But yeah, basically, there's a hierarchy, see? So um, you've got an RC, which is a riding club or a rally club. Um, you've got an LRC, ladies riding club or rally club. You've got an MMC, which is actually motorcycle club, and an MC, which is motorcycle club. But the reason there is a difference between an M MC and an MC, you have to have another, uh, another C on the MCC just to d differentiate the two because an MC is a higher status than an MCC. In very basic terms, an MC, if you're in an MC, that comes first. If, if the club call you, you're going, right? So an MC is basically your life. The club comes first, no matter what, especially if it's a 1% MC, but that's a, another story. An MCC will normally be side patch, like we're, that's our patch there on the side, okay? An MC is normally back patch, so the patch is on your back, and you have a three-piece back patch. So you'll have a top rocker, a bottom rocker, and the patch in the middle, okay? An MCC can be either front patch or side patch. Um, most MCCs will only have one rocker. Um, but, but ours, we've got two rockers. See, that's our rockers. So, but that's, we're the only club in our alliance that has that. Um, so that's unusual. So basically, that we are only one step away, in a way, of being an MC. So... An MCC, you can have your normal life and running alongside it is your club life, running along together. So your family and your job come first and then the club. Um, we do run this very strict, um, which some people don't really get. They think, well, why would you want so many rules when you're just supposed to be larking about on motorbikes? 
But if you don't have all these rules in place, it all just turns into, uh, I guess the only term I can use is shit show. Um, and it just doesn't work. So we, we run a very tight ship here. And that is how we've basically got what we've got and where we are. Um, yeah, so basically that's, uh, that, that sort of sums that up, I think. So as an outsider, so obviously for, for the club, I'm the first ever Lord to come and visit the you club. You are actually the first Lord here, yeah. Ever. I think in, in club history, I don't, I've never Quite heard of a Lord possibly. ever turning up to one. So as far as we're concerned, it's like a Guinness Book record. The thing is, you say that, you never know. Yeah, but we'll you might just... be in the bank, right? Because somebody said this to me yesterday at work, right? I won't mention the club, but they're in charge of us, okay? So they're the top of the tree. Yeah. Some of those guys have got jobs that you'd never believe, like some people. Can we just lie though, to make me sound good? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the first ever yeah, lord. Yeah, lord. Yeah, never be a to lord. be fair, there's probably a lord that's the president of a club. <laughs> but as far as we're concerned, for this video especially, yeah. not guaranteed, not proven. Yeah, there's never been a I lord. was definitely lord. And when I turned up, I was going to say, there's a red carpet put out That's the entire right. lot. But there was um, the hula hula girls putting flowers around your Exactly. Neck. It was it was emotional. Um, yeah, it was but emotional. The truth of it is, to be fair, turning up, obviously your whole club, now obviously you're the vice president of the club. I've been looked after massively. You guys put on some food for me tonight. You're going to put on a whole thing for us when we come on Sunday for the big reveal of the monkey bike, etc., yeah. etc. But what kind of blew me away is, is that like a lot of people, including myself, would have gone, oh my God, these guys are like a load of nutters and da da da, da. Mm. It's the opposite, isn't it? It is, yeah. like I said, it's like you're welcomed into a family. People have bought us drinks. They're talking yeah. to us. It's not what people think it is. It is a lot of respect, yeah. a massive amount of respect. The whole world is built on loyalty it, and respect. And it shows all the way through. Yeah. And it's almost like everyone here loves you and it's almost like they welcome us, like me and the psychic. Mm. But what blew me away most of all is like it's not just what people think. It's you do stuff like you do like you do a soup a soup yeah, run a soup every run. year. We, we do. There's quite a lot of charity stuff that happens. But yeah, that particular thing that I said that's for um, there's a homeless shelter in Bristol, and uh, yeah, every year we we basically take loads of clothes and um, excuse me, we take loads of clothes and uh, food and stuff. And uh, yeah, we do it every year. But there's a lot of charity things, like there's a club just down the road from us, good friends of ours, and they do a lot of stuff where they take um, toys to hospitals and stuff like that. So in the club scene, there is a lot of that kind of thing that go on. But a lot of people think, since they've watched the TV series Sons of Anarchy, there's a lot of people think that that is what it's like. But even though a lot of people in the club scene think that that caused a lot of bad publicity for um, the club scene, and maybe it did, um, I mean, that isn't reality, obviously. It's a TV show. Uh, however, they did actually work with the HA, with the Hells Angels, to, to get some things right. I mean, um, Lemmy the Pimp that's in it, who, who had a tracheotomy, and when he talked, he... Eldest thing that that's actually Sonny Barger who started the Hells Angels. Um, Happy that's in it was in the HA. I don't think he was when they actually filmed it, but so basically they had, they had to work with him to try and get some of it right. And um, and Jax Teller, the the main character, I guess you could say. Um, I watched it. I thought it was good. I liked it. Um, but yeah, it's not reality. Um, we only kill people and bury them in the woods like probably once a month, um, you know, but we got a wood chipper and everything, so it's a lot easier. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's all nonsense. It's That's just, the thing, I think. It's what? just hyped up for TV, obviously. Basically, at the end of the day, we're all like-minded guys that the common interest that brought us all together was motorcycles. We have a laugh, talk complete bollocks um, and enjoy each other's company. Um, Pretty much the same as every bloke that's out there riding his motorcycle. Um, apart from that guy that's going out on a Sunday that's ringing Gary and Jeff to see if they're coming out, who's got their bikes brand new on finance in the garage that never ride them. Um, you know, we actually get together and do it. I think, to be totally honest, if a lot of people knew a lot more about it, I think a lot more people would be getting involved. But I think... Maybe they're worried about it and they're, they're, they hear all these rumours and, oh, you got to bite the heads off chickens and all this crap. I mean, when I 
started prospecting, a few of my mates were like, oh, what have you got to do? What have you got to do? And, and it's not exactly what they think it is. The other side know? as well, turning up tonight as a complete outsider, it's... Mm. So the vision, this is what I think, and people will say in the comments if they get it or don't get it, but I, the picture of a bike club is Harley Davidsons, Wellard bikers, walk in, you're going to get your head kicked in. That's not the, the actual truth. Yeah. Like, turning up here tonight, we had every kind of bike possibly rock up, and I don't, I mean, not yeah. Harleys, but we had like rockets and all sorts turn up, yeah. and it's all handshakes and it's all niceness. And the other side yeah. that I like about it as well, and on your website it, it says it, that you have your meeting between a certain time yeah. and people can come down and visit you yeah, and actually right. experience it. So yeah. you don't have to join the club just to go, yeah, you know what? Right. I'd love yeah. to come along and just have a drink and talk to these yeah. people. Cause there's it's... a couple of guys down there now that, that, you know, they're not support members. They're not, you know, joining the club or anything, but they're friends of members of the club and they come down on a Thursday night. There's um, Western Supermail on the seafront. They have a bike night and in the summer, loads of people come back here um, just to talk crap and have a laugh. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not good, everybody's got the commitment, but um, I, I think a lot of people get the wrong idea. But this is basically an unbreakable chain of brothers that, I mean, I, I did a little video on my channel about it. I mean, back, you know, some people, they might be like, oh, I need to, I need to shovel a few ton of gravel around the back of my house, you know, um, I'll, get, I'll ring Paul and Fred and see if they can come and help me. And it's, oh, I would do, dude, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm having my asshole bleached or I'm having my toenails clipped or something. Uh, you let it that out, it'd be fine. Um, and they don't turn up as a no-show. But yet when they needed a lift to work for a week because their car or their bike was down, you took them to work. Every, you know, there's scenarios like that, and it just doesn't happen. Whereas with this, say I needed 25 guys, 20 guys to come to something... I need a hand with summit, they're there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah. that's, that's worth a lot. You look after um, each other, don't you? The biggest yeah. thing about this place since turning up is it's like yeah. people are cooking us food, they're looking after us. Everyone looks after each other. There's yeah, no, that's right. yeah. there's no like the big I am, is there? It's very much like we all look after each other. This is a club. We have our rules, but we're yeah. there. Does that make sense? There are, there are some instances where without going into any details certain things have happened to certain members whereas in normal life that's a problem and oh you don't know how to deal with it um the easiest way without saying too much is it gets dealt with and um and then that that's sorted you know we we had we had a problem one of the guy's daughters was having a problem well that got sorted out in about 10 minutes you know um so yeah there's there's you know that was fine but there's there's all sorts of advantages, but but the 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 best thing in the summer, it's obviously a bit crap in the winter, because um, the weather in this country, obviously in the UK, the weather sucks the fun out of it all. But in the summer, you're cruising along, we're all going somewhere, and you look in the mirror, and you've got all the guys behind. You look in front of you, you've got all the guys in front of you, you know, and you, and you ride through the towns, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, I love it, it's great, you know, but. Um, yeah, the only regret that I've got with joining a motorcycle club is I should have done it a lot sooner in my life. But I guess the stars weren't quite aligned at that time, I suppose. Um, it's weird. I mean, since the day I got here, the, the day I started prospecting, all I've been doing is push, push, push. Um, I mean, that is how come I ended up being vice president, you know, because I was just wanting more for the club, wanting more for the club, you know, all the time. And that is how I am. Um, but yeah, one of the best things I've ever done, apart from my small people. And um, they're the best thing I've ever done. But yeah, I love it. It's great. Well, as an outsider, I'm, it's humbling. To be honest, to be here and the amount of respect and people buying me drinks and the food you guys have put on has been fantastic. So I'm going to shake your hand. Well, I will just add something to that. The thing is, when, it, when an outsider comes, they're not an outsider. Because when an outsider to, to everybody else comes, that person is here because he's normally a friend of someone. So anybody that's a friend of anyone in the club is automatically a friend of the club. Do you see what I mean? That makes sense, yeah. So yeah. that's why I felt like I was at home yeah. from the moment you walk in. 
because everybody knows that you're coming. It's not a yeah. surprise, is it? Yeah, like everyone right. knew I was coming tonight. Yeah. Um, it's great. Look, I'm going to shake your hand. I'm going to say thank you very, very much because no I know it's a big deal and it's like cool. Thanks, and I've had a great laugh. And sliding down the pole, my missus now is going to get so excited. You did slide excited. down that pole so well. I took my top off as well. That I was know, the thing. I took my top off and I did it in a manly <laughs> lord way. So your first brilliant. lord down your pole. Yeah, indeed. First lord down our pole. Yeah. Lovely. Right, I'm going down. Okay. That was slightly camp, but okay. Are you coming down? Oh, he's coming naked. No, you'll be fine. Sidekicks at the bottom, ready to catch you. I'm joking, I'm just getting back. Yes, but you've got to bend your bend over a bit. Why are you taking this top off? <laughs> <laughs> that was quite, that was alright. Well, that was quite sedate, wasn't it? I've got to climb it up. <laughs> 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 I won't be climbing up. Well, we're now the next day because what we basically did is we had loads of drinks, had a laugh, had a giggle, uh, went to McDonald's, came back and went to sleep. <laughs> yeah, till the early hour. Well, it, yeah, it was gone 12, wasn't it? But yeah, it was a lot, late night for us. Massively late night. But oh, was, that, was it gone 12? Was it like 2 in the morning? Yeah, it probably was. <laughs> yeah, but we had a great laugh, didn't, oh, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, they put on food for us, they yeah. looked after us, and to be fair, I think you'd go back now and relive it. Yeah. What time is it? Can we go now? <laughs> I think it was brilliant. Wasn't it, it was, was good. good night, yeah. It was surreal for us because it's like we've never done anything like that before. Um, but what a cool place! Yeah, seriously, right, so cool they place. Really looked after us, didn't they? they? It was, yeah, it was what a what a night. It was like, yeah. you know, going down the pub with your mates, basically. Yeah, and it was but like old school, wasn't it? Yeah. It was different. It was not going down the pub now. It's like going to an old school pub. Yeah. And just it was just well, cool. You know everybody, even though we didn't know anybody. You know, once we had a few drinks and just chatted with everybody, and yeah, it was really good. Really yeah. good night. We were well, we were welcomed and looked after, and it was it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. cool. Well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next bonkers episode. We don't even know what we're going to do today because obviously it's the next day, and we're about to figure that out. And this will be the next episode. Catch you later.